Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today we're answering a member question from Scott. He wanted to know how to animate a slinky in Cinema 4D. You can get your C4D questions answered as well by becoming a CG Shortcuts member at cgshortcuts.com or over on Patreon. Now let's hop into Cinema 4D and see what we can do. So we'll start by creating our slinky spring shape, which we should be able to achieve with a helix object, which I want to be pointed upward. So I'll change the orientation to the XZ plane. Then I'll reduce the width of this to 15 centimeters at the start and end of the spring. And I want about 40 coils in my spring. So over in the end angle, 360 degrees will give us one full coil. So I'll type 360 times 40 which gives us our spring shape. But the helix spline itself is a bit low res and not very smooth, so we'll need to increase the subdivision to 200. And there is our stretched out slinky. So the plan now is to animate this and have it move across the floor in this direction, compressing and expanding as it goes. So we'll need a path for our slinky to follow. And I'm going to use a rectangle for that. And to keep things nice and simple, I'll have each movement of our slinky to be 100 centimeters in this direction. So I'll set that to be the width of our rectangular path. And I'll shift this over to be in line with our spring. And I might make it 200 centimeters high for now, but we just want this part here as the path our spring is going to travel along. So I'll grab the rectangle and hit Shift C to make it editable. And we'll uncheck Close Spline which doesn't quite give us the part of the shape we want. So to change which point is the starting point, we'll switch to point mode and right click on this point. Then under point order, we'll set this one to the first point instead. And we've now shifted that gap along and we have our arch shape. So I'll grab these two points at the bottom and move them up in line with our slinky, which is where our ground plane is going to be. Then we'll grab the two points at the top and round them out by right clicking and we'll chamfer them. And we just need to click and drag until we get our arch shape, like so. And we'll call this spline path one. And now we're going to make our slinky travel along this path. And we can do that with a little help from a spline wrap deformer, which will make a child of our helix. So the spline we want to wrap our helix to is going to be our new path. So we'll drag that into here. And if it looks a bit crazy like this, it's probably because we're wrapping it along the wrong axis. So we'll just need to switch this to positive Y, I think. And we've now stretched our slinky over the length of that path. And what's cool about the spline wrap is that we can also animate this easily as well with these settings here. So we can stretch this out with the from control and animate it to the end of the path by offsetting the to control. So that is exactly what we'll do. So let's undo that and increase from until we've got a good starting position, which shouldn't be completely flat. So I think about 95% should be good. So at the beginning of our timeline, we'll set a keyframe there and we'll also keyframe the two value as well at 100%. Then we'll go ahead 15 frames and move from all the way down to zero and keyframe both settings here. Then ahead another 15 frames. We'll now drop two down to 5%. So it matches the height of our starting position and keyframe both of those again. And if we now play this through, we've animated our slinky from one position to the next. So we're halfway there, but at this point, our slinky is now upside down. So we need it to travel along one more arch to put it back the right way again so that we can loop the animation. So I'll switch back to object mode, grab our path again, and holding control, I'll drag out a duplicate, which I'll position at the end of our first path. So at this point in the animation, we then want to switch to our new path and continue traveling along that instead. So we'll go back to frame 30 where we ended our previous arch and back in our spline wrap, it's just a matter of switching out the spline. So if I keyframe this here with path one driving the spline wrap, we'll then go ahead a single frame and switch to our new path, which we'll rename to path two. And we'll just drag that in here and keyframe that and if we play this, it's now jumping over here, which isn't quite what we want. So to have it start back at this end, we just need to reverse the direction of our new path. So I'll grab that, switch back to point mode. And if we right click this, we'll go back to point order. And this time we'll select reverse sequence, 
which puts that back to where we want it. And we get this. So now it's just a matter of continuing the animation along the second path. So back to our spline wrap, we'll go ahead another 15 frames to frame 45. And we'll bring two back up to 100% to stretch the slinky across the second path. Then keyframe these. And finally, another 15 frames along, we'll take from to 95%. And keyframe those again to put our slinky back in its original orientation. And that gives us our completed animation that we'll then go ahead and loop very shortly. But at this point, because our slinky is still just a spline, let's give it some thickness. So I'll just pick a frame where it's stretched out again. And to our helix, let's add a sweep object as a parent. Then we need a profile shape to sweep along our helix. So I might just use another rectangle, I think. And we'll scale that down. And we'll see what that looks like when it's contracted as well. Maybe a bit too thick, so we'll reduce the height a bit more. And I think something like that looks good. And you could also add some rounding as well if you didn't want those edges to be so sharp. But I think for the tutorial, this should do nicely. So let's have a look at the animation again. I think it looks cool, but I think we could probably make it slightly more interesting by adding a bit of overshoot to the animation. So let's rewind this and grab our helix and we'll add a delay effector as a child of that and put it after our spline wrap deformer in the hierarchy here. Then we'll set the deformer mode to point so the delay effector will influence the points of our helix. Then under effector, we'll set it to spring mode. And that gives us this kind of motion, which looks great minus the weird thing that happens in the middle here, but we'll fix that shortly. But first I might lower the spring strength to 30% and make the effect a little bit more subtle, like so. And now we'll see if we can fix the bit where it's going from one path to the other, which we should be able to do in our delay effector by adding a linear field. And we can use this to control where on our path the springy effect will take place. So if we set this to the positive Y axis and lower the length, and take a look in our side view. Our linear field is now going to limit the delay effector to this part of the path only and not affect it when the spring is touching the ground. So let's see what that looks like. So the first part works well and it's no longer bouncing through the floor, but we still get that weird thing when we transition to the second path. So we might need one delay effector for the first part of the path, which will deactivate when the spring lands here then we'll have a second delay effector for this part so we can avoid that crazy transition. So if we move ahead to frame 30 and select our delay effector, we can keyframe it enabled here. Then one frame ahead, let's keyframe it disabled. Then holding control, we'll make a duplicate of this and have it activated only during the second part of the animation. So we just need to switch the activation keyframes around. So it starts off then switches on here when the previous delay deactivates, which will give us something like this. Perfect. So before we extend and loop this animation, we could also adjust the path at any time as well. So if we didn't want such a high arc like this, we could grab both of those and with point mode active, we can grab these points and shift them down a tad to get a more rounded movement like so. Okay, so let's loop our animation and have our slinky carry on traveling in this direction. So I'll set our scene length to the 60 frames of our animation and go back to the start. Then we'll grab the hierarchy from the sweep object and bake this as a limbic. And we'll hide our old setup. And now we've got our animation contained into a single limbic object, which is basically exactly what we had before. So we're going to clone this along this direction and offset the animation with an effector. So I'll put that into a cloner object first, which clones in a grid fashion by default, but we'll need linear. And to make it go along this way, which is the X axis, we need to zero this out and come along the X axis here. And this needs to be the length of our two paths, which were 100 centimeters each, giving us a total of 200 centimeters, which puts the clones at the end of each animated section. 
But if we hit play here, all the clones are animating at the same time. So we need a way to offset them to play one after the next, which we can easily do by adding a step effector. And in there, we'll turn off the default scaling. And usually we'd then be able to offset the animation by tweaking the time offset value down here. But for this particular setup, it's not going to work because we're using a baked Alembic object, which has its own animation controls inside, which won't interact with effectors, unless we do a little workaround. If we disable use animation in our Alembic object, we can use the manual frame offset instead, which will work with effectors, but we just need to keyframe our animation. So on frame zero, let's keyframe this on zero. And on frame 60, we'll keyframe this on 60. Which gives us the exact same thing, only now if we grab our step effector again, we can control the offset of the cloned animation. So it's just a matter of starting that offset at the end of the first cycle. So it transitions into the next clone. So about there which is actually going to double the length of our 60 frame animation to be a 120 frame offset. Then to play this back, we'll need to extend our timeline as well. So I'll make this 180 frames and we get something like this. So we're almost there. The only issue now is that the clones freeze on the last frame of the animation. But to complete the illusion, we need them to disappear at the end of each cycle. So all we need to do is keyframe the visibility. So we'll rewind this and grab our baked Alembic animation under the basic tab. On frame zero, we'll make this invisible by setting the visibility to off and keyframing that, which hides all the clones. But on the next frame, we'll make them visible again and keyframe that, which gives us this but our slinky is still visible on the last frame. So we need to do the same thing at the end of the 60 frame animation by keyframing this on, but on frame 61, we'll keyframe it off. And we should now get our completed animation where the slinky appears to travel on forever. And you can use this technique to replicate our example looping render as well. You just need to tweak the paths to travel downstairs like so. You can grab the render ready project file for this from our website at the link below. And if you found this video useful, feel free to leave a comment down there as well. And if you need a bit of extra help with Cinema 4D, please do get in touch or become a CG Shortcuts member, which gives you access to all of our premium C4D training and resources. So you can master Cinema 4D faster. Just head over to cgshortcuts.com. So that's it for now. I'll catch you next time.